Welcome to Let's Play StarCraft 2. Playing the game will be me, Ralden, and I'm joined with Sinestrin. Hi. This is what, you record attempt 3, 4? Yep, something like that. We've had some, some technical difficulties. Uh, we'll be playing through the Wings of Liberty campaign, and then hopefully we can move on to the expansion Heart of the Swarm afterwards. You know, I'm, I'm guessing if we can uh, keep a schedule of about once a week, we should be finishing up part of the swarm about the time that Legacy of the Void drops. Uh, given Blizzard, I don't think Legacy of the Void is going to be for another another two years, so I guess you don't have much faith in our ability to support. <laughs> well, you know, maybe maybe if we get derailed every other week because of technical difficulties. Yeah, that could be. So we'll be playing through the campaign on Brutal, brutal Difficulty, the highest difficulty level. Um, it's it's a little bit challenging, uh, but if you're a good player and you don't make any careless, silly mistakes, you should be able to get through it without too much trouble. So so basically, what you're saying is, if you're good at the game and you don't screw up, then you can take the hardest difficulty setting. Okay. Uh well, I guess. <laughs> but but even if you're you're not so good at the game, with a few retries, it's you can definitely get through it. Fair enough. So we're going to have a, a substantial amount of viewer participation in this, aren't we? That's true. Um, eventually we'll be getting to a lot of choices and choices on upgrades and how we want to outfit our units, so uh, there will be some viewer participation probably after every mission that we do. Oh, okay. That sounds fun. And there will also be choices in what missions we do take. Oh, right, so we can't even build up a backlog. Yep, unfortunately. Alright, so... Uh, See you guys on the other side of the cutscene. They say a man never really knows himself. Until his freedom's been taken away. I wonder... How well do you know yourself? Prisoners, step forward onto the platform. It's 
glory. And all its horror. Mr. Findlay, your freedom awaits. Hell, it's about time. Blizzard always knows how to make some really nice looking cutscenes. Yeah, they've been cultivating that ability for, oh god, a decade now. Longer than that, actually. Remember, uh, the Warcraft 2 cutscenes were even impressive. the end of the so-called Brood War some four years ago, our own Kate Lockwell was on the scene. Emperor, the threat of a new Zerg invasion is still very real. But instead of expanding our fleets, you've squandered trillions on hunting down has-been rebels like Jim Raynor. Jim Raynor represents a clear and present threat in the name-dropping brood war. He is an unscrupulous, lawless revolutionary bent on spreading fear and dissension across the sector. He and his ragtag band of miscreants have instigated open rebellion across six separate worlds and stolen vast amounts of civilian weapons. It ain't over till it's over, you son of a bitch. Adjutant, are my troops ready yet? Your forces are prepared and awaiting your orders, Commander. Uploading tactical data now. Good. About time we kick this revolution into overdrive. Backwater Station is the center of Dominion Logistics on Masara. Destroying Dominion Authority here will cripple Emperor Menk's operations throughout the planet. Alright, and now we've got our first mission. Let's get into it. Adjutant, what do you got for me? Dominion forces have set up a logistics headquarters in the town of Backwater Station. This has become the hub for all operations. Good old Marsara. The Dominion recently pulled troops out of the city and they are now under strength. Are the locals cooperating? The people of Backwater Station are known to be anti-Dominion, but they lack weapons and organization. If I can take that headquarters away from Mengsk, it'll cripple him on this planet. Prep my ship. Marsara is where uh, the original StarCraft began, wasn't it? Yes, it was, and I think it was even uh, Backwater Station. Yeah, that's right. So definitely a lot of callbacks to the original Starcraft. Yeah. Although, it was a bit different. First missions, the first few missions on in Starcraft involved fighting the Zerg who were attacking the colonists on Marsara. Here, it starts straight off with a, a revolution against the current Terran government. Alright, so now our UI pops up and we got our first... You can count on Ability to control units. Let's move. Unit control ability, that's that's a very important one. Yes. So we're introduced to our very first unit, the Can't Marine. The basic infantry unit of the Terran army, and a really strong one. We'll do. You'll probably see these all the time. Yep, they're basically the backbone of the army. They're, they've got a high damage output, uh, fast attack, even though they are pretty this weak with good. only 45 health. But they do just so much damage that you can kill things before they kill you. Yes, and so they're cheap. They shoot ground units and air units. They have some fantastic upgrades. And we also have our hero unit here, Jim Rayner. He's basically a beefed up marine, got more damage, more life, more armor, more everything. So he'll be tanking a bunch of hits in this mission, won't he? Yep, so we'll keep him at the front to protect our squishier marines. 
and hopefully he'll take the damage instead of the marines. So I feel like we should mention really quickly how the, the armor and damage system works in the game, only uh, to make it make sense why Raynor is so ridiculously powerful right now. Right, so weapons do a fixed amount of damage, unlike, say, Warcraft 3, uh, where they do a range of damage. Like, every marine shot does 6 damage, and Jim Raynor does 12 damage, so basically twice as much and has a longer range. He's also got two armor, which is a straight reduction of damage, so marines will do four damage to him, instead of the full six damage that they do to other marines. By and large, when you get weapon or armor upgrades, it only adds one to either of those, so a marine with one armor will take one less damage from everything, and a marine with plus one weapons will do one extra damage to everything, so they basically cancel out to keep them synced with your opponent, in most cases. What's the plan? Yep. And you can see that since we're on Brutal, our enemies have an upgrade, meaning that their guns do 7 damage and they have 1 armor. So their marines are better than ours. What's the plan? Time to man up. You can count on me. But we have numbers and we got Jim Rayner, so we're cool. And we have a good player controlling our marines who can keep them dancing out of the line of fire, so that helps. Commander, destroying the Dominion holoboards will help incite rebellion against the Dominion. So how many of these fancy micromanagement tricks are we going to see over the course of this game? Oh, there's only a couple that I might just use very often. I just try to pull away any weakened units. Occasionally I'll probably do some stutter stepping, which is just attacking uh, and then moving while the attack is on cooldown. Sounds like a plan. But there's only a few things really that I'll do. You can count on. Where is everyone? The Raiders roll. This better be good. Armed and ready. What's up? You gonna that was a little orders? bit close. Break it down. <laughs> My neighbors. Hey. My Love the graffiti on the billboards. Starting to look ugly. Yep. Sounds like a plan. You can notice there's the the haymanks and the poor sap down here. Raiders roll. Sell me. I guess they caught. I guess they caught the guy. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> maybe he. Maybe he fell off. Force is gathering in the center of town. Then it's time to call in that special delivery we talked about. Oh, I didn't notice that cactus cacti grew on Marsara. That's a thing. Well, you might have noticed my sweet micro trick of shooting my own marine. Um, I recognize that was merely to give the computer a, a slight advantage. Yes. Since you were about to get reinforcements, there was no reason for you to keep all of your marines healthy. Oh, of course. Kick ass. Protecting you from yourself. Break it down. It's a. Sell me. It's a pretty nice billboard there. Sounds like your freedoms must be protected. Shut up, Max. <laughs> this is bad. I maintain he's still one of the best villains in Sounds recent like video game history. Time to man up. Uh, I guess. If only because everyone hates him. It's true. It's pretty effective at getting an emotional reaction from the players. Disappeared. I don't know why they hate him. I mean, he's just leading. He's he's protecting your freedoms. <laughs> They're shooting civilians. Move in. Sounds like a plan. Been waiting on you. What's the plan? Some uh, really good protection going on there. This better be good. Break it down. Yeah, I mean, everyone else is in danger. They're protecting them from to. themselves. Exactly. What's the plan? You gonna give me orders? Alright, so we see a Dominion transport. I think this is the only Dominion transport we will see in the game. So enjoy it while it lasts. Sell me. Yeah. By the way, for anyone watching who's unfamiliar with uh, real-time strategy games, I should point out that a marine that has one health does just as much damage as a marine with forty-five health. So. Hey, these marines. 
These Marines have three health. Still being held up ahead. Oh, three health. Well, okay. <laughs> Sell them. Friends, with our official labor program... should be glad that the, uh, the AI doesn't target fire your, your troops. Yeah, that could be bad. I got a lot of Marines that aren't, aren't too healthy. Been a while since we saw you around here. We're with you, Raiders! Labor redistribution mandates may require you to serve your German areas all across the Dominion. Hey, now and we now, have a yeah. completely mission unique kind of unit. Yep, so now we've got a bunch of civilians on our side, they throw Molotovs. We can't select them, can't control them. We'll just uh, have to let them do their thing. Now, do they actually just follow Rainer around, or do they follow a preset route? I guess uh, they no, they... Fact. Yeah, they follow a preset route, they just attack. What's up? Raiders roll. Oh, okay. So, you cross the line and then they do their thing. That makes sense. Oh, fire bats. We're introduced, we're very quickly introduced to Firebats and Vikings in this mission. That's cool. So, we didn't get to see very much of them, but we'll see them later. I think that the civilians are actually really important, because otherwise your marines would all be dead. ...and the resources to do it. Remember, Minks can only control you if you... I guess our mission is a rousing success. Yep. We win! And we can check out the sweet achievements that I've already gotten. But we could have gotten. I think we would have, we would have gotten all the achievements. If we hadn't gotten them all already. Wow. Way to go. You've ruined everything. I'm sorry, everybody. I'm just too good at this game. Too good. But going through, we will not be trying to get every achievement going for every everything that they say. Because some of them, they require you to play the mission in a specific way that's not really very, very fun to play or watch. So I won't be getting all of them. Makes sense. And some of them are pretty difficult to get in brutal difficulty, some of these uh, toughest, the toughest achievements. Right. Okay, well, cool first round. Well, mission. Tigus Finley. <laughs> nice suit. Pays to be prepared. I heard they put you on ice. Live sentence. What? To give you time off for good behavior? That's right, old buddy. I'm a model citizen now. So, to what do I owe the pleasure? Just a friendly business proposition. Do you even know what the Dominion are doing out here? I'm guessing you're about to tell me. Digging up alien artifacts, old buddy. 
Your boy Minsk has gone crazy for him. But I got a contact that'll pay top dollar for every artifact we liberate from the Dominion. I guess I can hardly pass that up now, can I, Tychus? Partners, then. 60-40. 70-30. My way. <laughs> Feels like old times already. Old times. And now we're introduced to the lobby area, uh, where we'll be between missions. Yes, the intermission lobby. Something that didn't exist in previous Blizzard games, I don't think. So here we can just check out whatever various things are. They tell us the news, Tychus. Let's check out this Viking photo. This looks recent. This you're doing, Jimmy? Folks in these parts are ready to fight back against Maxx. Guess they just needed a little push. You still take this whole revolution thing pretty serious, then? Everyone needs a hobby, Tychus. Alright, and... Kerrigan. Sarah. Sometimes... I think it would have been better if you just died that day. So, the relationship between Jim Rayner and Sarah Kerrigan might seem a little bit strange if you're coming here straight from Brood War, uh, considering in that... He had dirty thoughts about her, and, you know, that was kind of it, I guess. Yeah, that was pretty much their suggestion towards their relationship. And then they spent the next expansion pack detailing how he wanted to kill her. Yeah. Things have changed. Things have changed. A little, little bit. Although, it's worth mentioning that he did, at the end of the uh, Brood War expansion, I think, swear that he would kill her. Yeah. Himself. I guess he, he changed his mind. Call me curious, but how'd you get out? Well... I busted out of my cryo-freezer while they were transporting me to New Folsom. Oh, I must have killed at least a dozen guards with my bare hands. <laughs> yeah, I've heard this one before. But you left out the part where you walked on water. Made off with the warden's daughter. Don't you get up, buddy, with me, boy. I heard all about you becoming a big-time freedom fighter while I was away. What happened, Jimmy? The war for truth and justice get too much for you. I ain't licked yet, Tychus. And I promise you, Minsk is going down, one way or another. Oh, and we do see on the news, uh, ETC, Elite Torn Chieftain. <laughs> yeah, the... What, level 70 Elite Tyrant Chieftain? Is that what it is, or are they 80? Uh, uh, Blizzard's in-house band. So, or 800, I guess, here. <laughs> they, they, Blizzard has a lot of little in-jokes like that that they like to put in. We'll be seeing some of those. Let's check out the news. Best part of the intermission lobby. Vermilion, live from the UNN studios on Core Hall. We've got a breaking story for you. Let's go live to our own Kate Lockwell on the fringe world of Marsara. Kate? Thanks, Donnie. Rebel Jim Rayner has reappeared in a big way. He's attacked a Dominion depot near Backwater Station, seizing weapons and distributing them to the local populace. Kate, I bet the locals are pretty nervous about having a notorious outlaw in their neighborhood. Actually, Donnie, the people I talked to seemed really encouraged thanks, by the... Kate. You heard it here first. Jim Rayner, terrorizing the locals on Marsara. When we return, are your kids using skin packs? Keep talking, pal. I'm just getting started. The news is always, always 
entertaining, fun to watch. Are your kids using stem packs? Hmm. Drugs. Uh, one thing that's not mentioned here is that this jukebox we can change to uh, a Zerg shotgun and you, and to whatever <laughs> country songs we want. Or country covers of classic rock songs. I, I right. still don't know how I feel about that. Well, not going to listen to all these songs. So let's check out our next mission. Thanks to your actions, Marsara is now in a state of open revolt against Arcturus Mengsk. Ex-convict Tychus Findlay has revealed the Dominion came to Marsara to excavate an alien artifact. Seizing the artifact will strike another blow against the Dominion and generate funds from selling it to Finlay's mysterious contacts. Alright, so it looks like we've got a uh, smash and grab job next time. Smash and grab sounds like fun. I mean, we did a lot of smashing last mission, just not a lot of grabbing, so mission variety here.